Hi everyone, this is Naturally Afrosis welcoming you to Fuse Farm. It's been long. In today's video, we are going to be stocking fingerlings in our new pond. We will also touch a little bit on restocking an old pond. So we are happy this time. For the first time, we've managed to get big fingerlings. Most of the times we get very tiny ones, I think about a gram or so. So this time we managed to get between two to three grams. We are very excited about that. So without wasting much of your time, let's go and start stocking. I had wanted to carry you along to buy the fingerlings, but I couldn't make it my husband went to buy anyways next time so i'm taking you to the newly constructed ponds now if you notice our plastic bags look like airtight balloons that's because they are airtight so when you buy the fingerlings they put water in the plastics yes. and then they fill the plastics up with oxygen and make them airtight then they carry them upside down i'm sure it's to make sure that the oxygen does not escape so it is important even as you buy your fingerlings to know the distance that you have to cover so that your oxygen does not deplete otherwise your fingerlings would die so this whole process of transferring fingerlings can be stressful to the fish and um, during transportation the temperatures of the water might change so when you bring the fingerlings to your pond you don't stock immediately you wait, wait. you put your plastics in the pond and wait for about 20 minutes to allow the temperature of the water in the plastic and that of the pond reach equilibrium so you wait and wait and wait trust me that's the longest 20 minutes you can ever wait as you can see the gentlemen are beginning to fidget around so the next step is uh, untie the plastics and start unraveling your plastics bit by bit lowering one hand into the water you make sure you don't push out the, the fingerlings you don't force them out you allow them to move out freely so you lower your plastic to the point where the water now mixes until one comes out goes back comes out when one comes out that will be their leader and all the fingerlings will start following and then you allow them to come out slowly So you do this for all the bags. Meanwhile, you're just standing there because if you fidget, you might step on the fingerlings. This right here is a perfect example of what not to do. He is shaking the plastic bag behind there and you can see the confusion that it has created. The fish does not know where to go. The instructions were clear, but they were not followed. That is why as the owner, you always need to be there when you're doing major milestones. Whatever you do, you want to make sure you minimize levels of stress on the fish. That way you can avoid mortalities. And don't worry about it that I'm letting him do or make do wrong things or make mistakes. I was actually giving him instructions in the background. He's quite new. So we now told him to watch and learn. Forgive my change of color in the video. It's because I switched from the camera. The camera went off and I had to switch to my iPhone. And it turns out the iPhone captures the colors better than the camera that I was using. I was using the um, G7, G7X. From now on, I think I'll be using my iPhone when I'm shooting from outside. And the gentleman managed to learn. I must say he's a fast learner. I'm so proud of him. He managed to exercise patience and he also started releasing the fish nicely. 
with love and the other guy also lent and we were all happy the fish was happy too so after this when you're done you wait a bit and observe to see that all your fingerings have scattered they are not in your legs and whatnot so you carefully come out so that you don't step on their fingerlings. So let's talk a bit about the ponds that we restocked. I must mention that we managed to restock one pond, I think end of October. So we should be able to harvest somewhere around May. Out of the four old ponds that were done, we only managed to restock two. And uh, we did not restock immediately after harvesting because there were no fingerlings in stock so we had to wait for a long time and somehow we made a mistake we did not put water in the ponds so the liners were left for some time dirty because they were not cleaned by the time we were cleaning them i'm sure they were affected by the sun they're not uv treated and remember we were using 250 microns so out of the four we only managed to restock in two because the others were badly damaged which i think we also neglected them although i'm beginning to feel 250 micron no matter how careful you are is a bit of a stretch to expect it to last for more than two cycles if you're not very careful you might only end up using it for one cycle because even these ones that we managed to restock we had to mend but you can see around the edges that they still are getting cut and then to make matters worse we are also neglecting them by allowing the grass to even grow we'll clean them up and mend them as soon as possible so the other ponds you can see the extent of the damage in the middle on the sides so it means those pieces that remain don't throw them away keep them safe they will come in handy at some point so i'm showing you this because i want you to see that out of the four we only managed to restock in two so if we're not careful with these two we might lose out because we might end up just using them for one cycle so now the question is really is it really a saving to use a 250 micron i would like to hear your views let me know in the comments down below otherwise i'm beginning to think maybe the concrete ponds are better off so we'll see what happens but we'll try to stretch them so that at least they can give us two cycles remember in the first cycle we said it was just getting our money back but in the second cycle that's where we're supposed to get our profit so it is important that we stretch them at all costs the other pond that we have felt to restock is this one this one we attempted mending on the sides here it's fine but we think there must be a little bit in the middle somewhere there so it couldn't stop and the other thing is you don't have to fill in you don't have to fill your water completely to the brim for you to be able to tell that there's a leakage you just put uh, maybe some amount of water and then you observe whether it's going to go down or not and when it goes down you know that there's a problem so we had to remove some of the water we need to pump it out completely so that we see where the leakage is when we mend put some water in it and we stop so out of the four ponds we only managed to stop in two the other two still have issues but we stopped also in the new ponds that's why so thank you very much for watching if you found this video helpful please like share and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification button bye